What can you say about this guy and, and what he's accomplished in 66 days, I believe yeah. it is? The guy's special. I've been in this game my whole life. I've never seen anything like him. Hamza Chimaev. This man's the real deal. You see the training footage and you see the intensity that this guy pursues everything with. Yeah. He's just an absolute animal, non-stop in every way. Striking, wrestling, conditioning. The word is, by people who train with him, they're like, dude, he is a freak of nature. You've had guys that'll be like, let me talk to my team. This guy's like, I want to fight again here on Fight Island. I was like, really? We turn him around, he fights again, and he does it again. He's had three or four fights in the UFC. He's only been hit twice. What's crazy is when you talk about his win tonight and what he did and how impressive he was, he's a 170 pounder. He knocked out a guy who's 185 pounds with one punch. But I can't be everybody! Kill everybody! I'm the champ! Ah! If I kill everybody, what are you gonna do? Picking that man up and just having conversations with Dana White while he's got this man hoisted up in the air. I just wanna fight, bro. Fight, fight, fight. I love this shit. I mean, he comes from a tough place. Yeah. From a tough place, you're going to create tough men. One of the most special fighters I've ever seen, if not the most special guy that I've ever come across. I like to fight the in the cage and smash somebody. It's too easy. Smash somebody, you get money, brother. It's <laughs> perfect for me. So he's got like this tight-knit team until he goes to war. Then when he goes to war, he just wants to kill everybody. I don't care what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna go jump in the cage and I'm gonna kill that guy. I don't care, he will be down, I will smash his face, I will be stand up, I will knock him out, you know. I don't care, but. On the eve of UFC 194, Conor McGregor pulled the impossible. After a series of spectacular wins to kick off his UFC career, he was set to match up against the featherweight champ Jose Aldo. Up until that fight, Aldo was on a winning streak that spanned over 10 years and 18 straight wins. Conor was on the rise, but still an underdog, understandably so. Aldo seemed unbeatable. You know how the rest of the story goes. McGregor sleeps Aldo in 13 seconds, and thus his UFC legend took shape. On that same night, a 20-year-old boy watches the fight, itching to get inside the octagon, in any cage for that purpose, and show the world what he can do. If he can do that, then why can't I, he said to himself. He dreamed of a better life, a life where no one around him would care about food or money, a more comfortable life. That kid was Hamza Chimaya, and his legend was just beginning to form. Hamza Chimaya was born in the war-torn Russian Republic of Chechnya in 1994. His birth took place just months before the bloody First Chechen War. It was a tough time when I was young. I come to this world when it's World War. The village Hamzad lived in with his family was 50 miles away from the bloody violence in Grozny. And war was always looming over his family, threatening to spread towards their place of living. Yeah, it was everywhere, military, you know, like come to your house and check your house and everything. Because of the daily war reminder, Hamzat didn't see violence as out of the ordinary. He saw it as a way of life. You see these things every day and it's normal if you're a kid, he said in an interview for ESPN. It's a war-torn part of the world, horrible place to live. War didn't interfere with his ambitions. From an early age, he took interest in wrestling. Traditional sport in my village is wrestling. Yeah, you have to train wrestling, you have to be tough. If you don't do wrestling when you're a kid, they say, like, we joke with the guys who don't come to the training, you girl, like, you know, like. Can we just read about the Chetneans? Yeah, what, what we, kind we of just mentality did. Yeah. They are? Tough fucking That's people, man. That's the mentality, too. Yeah, it's very combat sports driven country. 
He started training when he was five years old and quickly became one of the best junior wrestlers in the country. Weighing only 18 kilos, he even fought in the 23 kilos category because he was too small. So he either had to wrestle older and bigger kids or not wrestle at all. Hamzat being Hamzat fought those kids. He fought kids in the street as well and often got into trouble. His older brother Artur recalls that after he was beaten up badly in one fight while being held at knife point, Hamzad was so angry that he wanted to kill those kids. He couldn't stand losing, inside and outside of the sport. Still, he pursued his professional wrestling career. His rise to prominence came during the Russian National Wrestling Championships where he won bronze, becoming a household Chechen wrestling name before turning 18. At the age of 19, he moved to Sweden with his mother and sister. The move followed an earlier migration of his older brother, who was also a wrestler in the Scandinavian country, due to him needing shoulder repair surgery. Our one brother, too, he has like surgery as well. After a while, Hamzad's brother called upon his family to join him. Yeah, my brother was living here that he told us that like, come here is good for us. After that, we stay here. We like it. Thus began Hamzat's journey to MMA stardom. They lived in a small village similar to the one in Chechnya, minus the war. When we come here, it was a small village here as well. When they later moved to Stockholm, they were cramped in a small apartment. Hamzat and his brother in one room, his sister and mother in the other. Living in this one apartment was who? Me and my mom, my brother, sister. Yeah, me and my brother were sleeping in the same room. My mother and sister were sleeping in the same room. But Hamzat didn't wallow in misery due to his difficult circumstances. He dreamed. He imagined a better life for his family as he strolled around his new surroundings. Seeing beautiful homes and dreaming of having one for him and his close ones. It's what we didn't know about Hamza before. We imagined him to be a ruthless fighter, an emotionless automaton designed to destroy his opponents. Outside of the octagon, though, he's been showing his other, more emotional side. If you want to understand Hamza, then you need to understand what drove him to become the fighter he is today. Of course, his relentless pursuit of mastery in the martial arts has helped immensely. Soon, I'm gonna be pound for pound number one. I'm gonna be champion. But it was the love for his mother that made him want to become a champion one day. Become one, as he said, to take the money home to his mother. I will fight absolutely everybody. I will go out and smash all of them. I will make some money and I will take it home to my mom finally making her live the comfortable life she deserves. From when Hamza was a child up until he couldn't make a living on his own, his mother was the sole bread earner in the family. My mom is important for me. That's why I'm working hard as well. Hamza at first didn't understand what his mother was doing when she refused to eat on certain occasions. Now he knows. She refused to eat out of wanting to see her children eat first. If something was left for her, then she would eat, but not before. She thinks always, always about us. She like, she wants like, you know, it's when I was young, you don't understand why she gives his food to us. Uh, she was waiting for us, like we finished the food and uh, this is things she left, you know, she's eat this one. That is what Hamzad is fighting for. If she's happy, I'm happy. <laughs> he didn't immediately take to fighting when he came to Sweden. His brother landed him a job at a poultry factory. And he also worked in security. So I always was thinking, always was working. After one year of work, Hamzad pleaded to his brother to let him go so he could pursue something better in Stockholm. But I said to my brother, after one year, let me go and try something else in the big city. His brother wasn't happy with this request. Artur wasn't a huge fan of MMA, and he believed that Hamzad was able to secure a safe and good life where he was. Much better than living and working in Chechnya, for sure. 
He was also worried that Hamzad would get into trouble, as he so often did in times past. He was he was gonna go with some troubles and do some foolish things, and he, he stopped me two years I was there. But Hamzad was set on entering the MMA world. His brother eventually agreed and let Hamzad loose. I find MMA, I said to him, I'm gonna make money. He said, I don't think you're gonna do that, but you can try it. Before he started MMA training, Hamzad made sure to assert his wrestling dominance in Sweden. Like he did in his home country, he wrestled for the Swedish wrestling club BK Athian. And during his wrestling stint, he easily won consecutive gold medals in 2016 and 2017 at the Swedish Freestyle National Championships at 86 kilograms. In 2018, he won another one, but at 92 kilograms. What was more impressive is the manner in which he did that. He won his matches with a perfect record of 10-0, 10-0, and 10-0 throughout the tournament. In the final, it was the same story, a 7 to nothing win. His dominant performances made him one of the best Swedish wrestlers. After his dominance in wrestling, the time came for MMA. He began training mixed martial arts in the famous All-Stars Training Center in Stockholm, the breeding ground of famous UFC fighters such as Alexander Gustafsson, a three-time UFC championship contender, as well as Alir Latifi. He started training under the tutelage of retired UFC fighter Reza Madadi. In his chat with Brett Okamoto, Hamzad recalled his first day in the gym where he quickly started a brawl with two other fighters. So the first day you came in, what happened? Yeah, I was boxing, sparring. It was water on the on the mat, chest pulled down on my one knee, and he still punched me and take out my gloves, I kick in his ass. His ill temper got the better of him, and he wanted to fight both of them at the same time. They refused, probably due to the sight of an angry Hamzat staring at them. Come on, jump in. You and me, I'm the man, you're the man, and he said, I don't have time for that. He had no money to live in Stockholm, but due to his relentless work ethic and apparent talent, the All-Stars team of head coach Andreas Michael and Majdi Shamas, owner of All-Stars, decided to offer Hamzad free lodging at the gym. Hamzad would have a room all to himself inside the training facility. People say they live in the gym, but I'm really real living in the gym, brother. After my UFC first two fights, I was living in the gym as well. Coach Shamas recalls, I said to him, you look dedicated. You stay here, you don't go back. Hamzad stayed in that room for four years, being alone each night, staring at his phone and watching movies, waiting for his moment. Sometimes it was lonely in that room. All sorts of thoughts drummed into his mind, but his resolve was untouched. He would become a great UFC warrior. He likes to compete in everything. Like he's a very competitive, like doesn't matter what it is. It has to be like a competition. He was very competitive, didn't like losing, and he was always getting into arguments with all the <laughs> The other guys. He would train three or four, even five times a day, something that he continues to do until this day. This guy, he goes hard. This guy, he, he wants it, you know. He doesn't want to lose one round in, in the training. So every time I spar with him, I have to be prepared. As a training and sparring partner for his teammates, is brutal, actually. That worth ethic and will has led him to always seek out the biggest challenges. In the gym, he always wanted to brawl with the biggest guys the best guys, such as Gustafsson and Latifi. Uh, I don't even know when it was, but then he just started to spar with me and all the, all the light heavyweight guys, all the heavyweight guys. It's what made the coaches take notice. Hamzad was fearless. Coupled with his talent and drive to succeed, that was a recipe for the ultimate fighting machine. He's just too strong, he's too big, and he's too good, just technically. People started talking. Rumors of a Chechen living in the gym basement, fighting Alexander Gustafsson and holding his own. And and he's just started. So that's the scariest thing with, with this guy. He just started his career and... It was like a fireball, as they say. Hamzat was itching to fight, whenever, wherever. 
Soon, he was ready for his first amateur MMA fight. It would come against future IMMAF world champion Khalid Lalam. Hamzat defeated him by submission. He also easily won the next two amateur fights, the first one by submission and his second one by technical knockout. The dominance in which he dispersed his first three opponents made other people take notice besides his coaches, who already knew what they had in their hands. There's a welterweight at, uh, in Sweden at Sweden MMA All-Stars that trains Alexander Gustafsson. I don't know his name. I just know him by reputation. And he's not in the UFC yet, but he has a whole lot of success over all the big names that train at, at, at MMA's All-Stars. When we get this kid signed, I think he's going to make some real waves. In 2018, Hamzat turned pro. At the International Ring Fight Arena 14, he fought against guard Ova Sagan. Again, it was an easy fight, which he won by technical knockout in the second round. Afterward, he matched up with Ole Magner in August 2018 at Fight Club Rush 3. He won the fight by submission due to a rear naked choke late in the first round. The easy wins he racked up led to a call from Middle Eastern organization Brave Combat Federation. He was scheduled to make his promotional debut against Benjamin Bennett in November 2018 at Brave CF18. But Bennett withdrew from the bout and was replaced by undefeated 4-0 prospect Marco Kisic. Hamzad had some defiance from Kisic in this fight, who showed a will to compete. And tried some bold moves during the fight, such as a triangle choke attempt. But he was no match for Hamzad, who finished Kisic by TKO. Again, an easy fight. He had a quick turnaround for his next fight. He took the bout against Sidney Wheel on short notice in December 2018, replacing injured Leon Alou. He finished Wheel in 35 seconds in the first round by technical knockout. It was becoming a recurring theme. Hamzat's opponents were simply no match for his strength, his will, and his wrestling. The only thing I want is the belt in 77. The belt is belong to me. After that fight came his biggest challenge up until that point. He was to fight Ikram Eliskerov in April 2019 at Brave CF23. The fight was his debut at welterweight. Eliskerov was an accomplished wrestler himself and a former Sambo champion. He was undefeated coming into this fight with Hamzat, and everyone expected a tough brawl that would end with one of the fighters unconscious. They were right, but if they witnessed one of Hamzat's grueling sessions at the All-Stars gym, they'd know that it wouldn't be him that would be knocked out. To be fair, Alaskarov showed flashes of brilliance during the fight exchanging fists, landing some leg kicks, and generally holding his own in the wrestling department, denying takedown attempts made by Hamza. But then it came. After one exchange, Hamza dropped Alaskarov in the first round with a vicious uppercut straight to the chin. Alaskarov went down already unconscious. The knockout earned Hamza Braves Knockout of the Night Award. The Hamza train kept on rolling with no signs of stopping. His next, and what would turn out to be his last fight for Brave CF, came on October 4th, 2019.
against Zwan Dile Hulangwa on the Brave 27 car. Hulangwa also had a perfect record of 4-0 coming into the fight against Hamzat. From the start, Hamzat imposed his dominance. He started the fight with his signature move of feeling the opponent with a leg kick, then immediately diving for a takedown, which his opponents rarely succeeded to deny. After a first round where Hamzat was always on top of his opponent, the second round started in the same way. Only this time, Hamzat took his opponent down by first lifting him off the ground, hugging him, jogging over to his coach's corner, and slamming him on the mat so he could hear his coach dole out advice. Quickly afterward, Hamzat submitted Halangwa with a Darce choke. After that fight, he was supposed to face champion Jarrah Al Salawi for the brave welterweight title in April 2020. Yet, due to the pandemic, the fight was postponed. It would be a lucky break for Hamzat, which would lead to his first step towards stardom. Hamzat's coach has for some time begged the UFC to take a look at his prize fighter. Unbreakable and unbeatable was what he was trying to convey to Sean Shelby and company. We want to choose a weight and go for the belt in that way. Finally, the UFC would listen. Having in mind that Hamzat's championship bout for Brave CF was postponed, he was finally offered a UFC contract. It was a short notice fight to take place in July 2020 on Fight Island in Abu Dhabi, which would be the saving grace for the UFC in a time of closures due to the pandemic. He was slated to fight against Welsh fighter John Phillips. Nobody expected Hamzat to start his UFC stint as he did. Slowly getting to his feet, but he's slowly getting, getting cracked in, the face, in yeah. the face. It was an absolute beating that he gave to Phillips, who stood no chance against the Chechnyan. After a first round, which Chemayev simply destroyed Phillips on the ground, grounding and pounding him seemingly with no end, amazingly, Phillips endured. The fight went to the second round, which went similarly to the first one. Hamzad would win the fight by submission. Then he just talks and that's that. Impressively, Hamzad had 124 strikes and received only two during the entire fight. Absolute dominance. It was a sign of things to come. Hamzad was hungry and he demanded his food. Only 10 days later, he knocked out Reese McKee in a middleweight bout. It was the fastest turnaround between victories in UFC history. Beautiful work from Chemayev. I mean, this is Khabib like pressure. Again, Hamzad dominated the entire fight start to finish, providing no breathing room for his opponent. Look at this control from Chemayev here. Stop, stop, stop. And the numbers that he produced in his first two wins were simply out of this world. 124 to 2 strike advantage in his first, and 68 and 0 in his second one. Still, the wolf was hungry. Still, he demanded his next meal to come as soon as possible. How many fighters in the MMI division? I'm gonna smash everybody. Give me champion, 84 kilos, 77 kilos. I'm gonna smash both. Again, his next opponent would be considered the real test for Hamza. Gerald Mearshart is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, so everyone believed that he would be tough to submit. He was a UFC veteran with 48 fights under his resume, of which 34 were wins so nobody believed that he would have an easy meal. During the pre-fight press conference, Mirshard was confident that it would be a difficult night for Hamza. In any of his fights that I've seen, he hasn't met real resistance. How many times do you lose your fights? I, I take it as somewhat disrespectful, yeah, because uh, I feel like uh, Hamza's looking past me a little bit. But you think you're a black belt? belt. I have a blue belt, they're gonna choke you out. I'm coming in, I'm the crafty vet, I'm a tough guy, and I'm gonna show him that this time you bit off more than you can chew. Boy, was he wrong. It was Sunday, September 20th, 2020. 
an empty UFC apex in which you could hear a fly buzz over your head. 17 seconds in, the only sound you would hear would be Hamzat's fist cracking Gerald Mearshart's chin. Hamzad had done it again. He knocked out Mearshart cold with his first punch. Hamzad for Shemaya! The kid was real. Time and time again, critics would be proved wrong. Even Dana took notice and called Hamzad special. A guy like this is the type of guy that you love to watch and follow. This guy is one of the most special fighters I've ever seen, if not the most special guy that I've ever come across. He captured the attention of fans all over the world. They admired him and opponents feared him. The sky was the limit for Chimaev. Everyone wanted to know more about him, where he came from, is he human, and who's next? Apparently, UFC had seen enough and wanted to speed up Chimaev's rise to the top. He was scheduled to face UK welterweight Leon Edwards in December 2020. Dana loves him. <laughs> the UFC is pushing him. If I go out there and flatten him, the tower shot should be next, right? But Edwards tested positive for COVID-19, so the fight was cancelled. Well, let's talk about the Hamza thing. Book for December, off because you had COVID. They tried booking the fight for January 2021, but that didn't happen as well. Book yeah. the January off because he had COVID. The third time was set for March that same year. However, it wasn't meant to be. And obviously now booked for March again. Now it's off because of these lingering COVID problems. So I wish him good health and we can probably meet one day on that line. I was so excited. It was one of my favorite fights this year was Chemayev and, and Edwards, so it sucks. Hamzad was amidst a battle with another opponent, this time outside of the octagon. COVID-19 had wreaked havoc on his immunity, and he developed serious complications because of the virus. It forced him to withdraw from the bout against Edwards. Hamzad flew to Las Vegas in February 2021 to receive medical treatment. Yet only weeks later, he abruptly announced his retirement on social media in March. This caught fans and critics alike off guard, including UFC president Dana White, who quickly reacted and flew Hamzat into Vegas to receive proper medical treatment. Majdi Shamas, All-Stars owner, has said in interviews that during his time with COVID-19, Hamzat had difficulties, both physical and mental, in his fight with the virus. He insisted that he wanted to train, then we tried, and it failed. Hamzad even told Shamus that he thought he was going to die. Admittedly, part of the fault for the lingering complications lay at Hamzad, who, despite the serious health issues and the doctor's recommendations, continued to train. That led to him having to cough up blood after one particular sparring session, as he explained in an interview with Brett Okamoto. Yeah, lungs, I feel pain there, like blood come out sometimes. He was scared about his life and scared about his family and his mother, wondering what she'll do if he wasn't around. That's why he was quick to announce his retirement. Surely this was his toughest opponent up until then. Yet, Hamzad persevered, and as he explained to Okamoto, he was again hungry for new flesh. Fight somebody, make money. Now I like hungry again. His next fight would be scheduled for October 2021 at UFC 267 against number 11 ranked welterweight Li Jingliang. Everyone wondered how Hamzad would bounce back from the serious illness and what impact would the virus have on his conditioning. Hamzad would provide the answer after 3 minutes and 16 seconds in his first round. Reminiscent of the fight with Halongwa, he picked up Jing Liang into the air, but this time, instead of going to his corner, he went to Dana White, chatted him up, and then slammed Lee to the ground. 
Yeah, he was yelling crazy shit at me the whole fight. Basically just saying, I'm gonna fight everybody. I'll fight Brock Lesnar. I don't care who. Shortly after, he choked Jing Liang out and gathered his fourth UFC win in a row. The win led to his explosive post-fight interview in which Hamzat clearly stated his future ambition. Everybody, everybody, I come here for everybody, kill everybody, I'm the champ, I'm the kick! Ah! The hype was now almost unbearable. Title shots were discussed. Hamzat Chimaev really does have a good chance of becoming the champion down the line. Who would be next? A lot of names were thrown in the air. Usman, Masvidal, Nate Diaz, Gilbert Burns. Fans awaited his next fight with eagerness that was eerily similar to the one that Conor McGregor produced during his best years. But Hamzat didn't waste time. Only two weeks after his win over Jing Liang, he faced Jack Hermanson in a wrestling match. Of course, he won. Hamzat was simply unstoppable. Hamzat is the fucking truth. Real deal. He's the fucking truth. Because mm. he just started training with this English guy, Darren Till. It's mm. kind of a hilarious duo. Darren Till is this Muay Thai fighter from England. He fights in the UFC, and he started training with Hamza in Sweden. They become like best friends. And now they call each other brother, and like everybody's his brother. So he's got like this tight-knit team. Brother, don't do these things here. I, I need to fight. After fight, we smash the wall. There we just sort of like, you know, like clicked straight away. It's Team Smash Bros for life. Gonna take over, aren't we? Kill everybody, smash everybody. We're here in Sweden, <laughs> here at All Stars in Stockholm. Internet's going wild about you and Hamzat training together. Um, how did this How did this come together? Obviously, everyone's seen the Instagram live where we were talking about fighting. I'll fight you, of course, you know I will. But you, you know I beat you, right? You know I beat you easy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can smash you easy, brother. But you because think? Smash me easy. Uh, of course, brother. <laughs> Too slow. Uh, Hamzat had tweeted me, and I was like, tell him you want to come out here. You know, and training with me, brother, the doors are open. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. He trains hard and he, listen, he genuinely wants to help me as well. Like, what is this mm. Darren Till shit? You say, what is that shit? This is not shit, it's a brother's relationship. Everyone's crying out for a reality TV show, and it's very possible, mate. Like, you know, we're getting a long way. He fully believes he's going to smash every guy <laughs> and make money. And yeah. that's what he needs to be around, like, because yeah. it's infectious. He loves me post fight interview after the, the Thompson fight. All them doubters, yes! Say it what now! Everyone and anyone, I don't care! I don't fucking care. It's just all that shit, he loves it. So he keeps saying it to me now, and he, I think it hypes him up a bit. The people that he trains with, mm -hmm. he's like their brothers who never fight them. He, he's like very tightly knit with the people he trains with. I'm become the boss now. I hate everyone. Till I get killed, bro, I'm gonna know, never gonna stop. But I do believe he's the most scary contender we've had for a while because there are just so many unknowns. That was one of the things that was most intimidating about Shamaya. It's his attitude. The fact that he's calling out two and three badasses at a time and sincerely does not care. Just send me location where he's Usman. He's too slow. Well, I can't take that belt today. Uh, Chemayev's called you out. Um, Chemayev's talking about becoming a triple champion. He hasn't even won a single belt yet. What do you think of this guy? I don't have to take him seriously till I have to take him seriously. The fact that he is willing to change weight classes on a week's notice, and these aren't just words, he'll actually go do it. The guy is, is so dominant, so confident, wants to continue to fight every weekend. Oh, Hamza has this persona, almost like Superman, like he can walk on water, like he can walk through the opposition, like no man alive can challenge him at all. I remember saying last year that I thought in a year he'd be fighting for the belt. Of course, COVID took things, you know, a little bit down a different path, but we're back on that track.
only seven months after coming off a respirator that he himself said he thought was going to cost him his career and possibly his life. He's so fucking good, it's terrifying. He's so good, it's terrifying. Four fights in the UFC, he's been hit twice. He has more victories in the UFC than he's been hit. He is the future. The kid's legit, he's real, and he knows it, and I love it. Well, what do you make of Hamza Chemaev's rise in the UFC, and do you see him as a future champion? Yeah, I do. He's got that commitment, he's got that talent, obviously development technically. I see guys coming up similar parts of the world that it's not an accident that they have that mindset that they have that warrior mentality where he comes from you're born to be a warrior it's an honor to behave that way it's an honor to behave that way if he were to fight Kamaru Usman this month what do you think that fight would look like I think you put Kamaru Usman to sleep honestly we've seen stars emerge very quickly Connor Israel Adesanya just to name a couple have you ever really seen anything quite like this, like this rise? No. Kamzat Shemaev, he's the most incredible prospect that I've ever seen in the UFC. Shemaev is as good as advertised. When you get into the top five in the UFC, no joke, man. And especially in that division. I mean, that division is straight killers. But that's what happens when you break into the top five in the world in any of these weight classes. You are going in against the absolute best in the world. Okay, I know Hamza don't care. He's like a hungry lion, just wanting to let him go in the cage against whoever, doesn't matter. After a few months of speculation, finally the decision was made. Hamzad would face number two welterweight contender Gilbert Burns in the main card of UFC 273. Compared to his other opponents, Burns would be a serious test for Chimaev. He was a one-punch wrecking machine with a right hand that almost, just almost knocked out the pound-for-pound -pound king, Kamaru Usman. But I think technically... Oh! Early land for Torino with the right hand! And he was also a physical specimen. Just take a look at his conditioning process during his preparations for Hamzat. The guy was preparing for hell. Hamzad was unfazed. He simply wasn't afraid of anybody. During fight week, he taunted Burns, showing off his muscles, saying that Burns is small. I'm small, brother. And that he's more Brazilian than him. He's not Brazilian. That guy is not fucking from Brazil. I am more than Brazilian than him. One should take a look at his preparations for each fight and see for himself what animal this guy is. He never stops training. His coach called him a savage. His teammate Alexander Gustafsson said that Hamzat hits like a heavyweight, moves like a lightweight, and that he's doing five sessions a day at least. Both Burns and Chemayev prepared for hell. Come April 9th, we would witness one of the greatest fights in recent UFC history. We wondered, will Hamzat smash Burns as he did his other foes? Will Burns be able to keep up with Hamzat's pace? The booking odds were overwhelmingly in Hamzat's favor. Everyone expected him to make a quick meal out of Burns, but real fight fans knew better. Gilbert Burns is a beast, and he showed that on April 9th. Both Burns and Chemayev exchanged haymakers. Wrestled on the floor and showed tremendous heart during the fight. It wasn't an easy fight, far from it, but his coach Andreas Michael believed that it could be. After the second round, you could see him going bonkers and yelling at Hamza. Afterwards, we would understand what the fuss was all about. He was fuming that Hamzat didn't take his time and use his jab more. He believed that it would lead him to an easy win. And I go off and I just take my distance and say, do not fight with him, box with him, use your fucking jab. Hamzat himself said that he didn't follow the game plan and that he wanted to get the flashy knockout as he promised to fans before the fight. I was too excited to knock him out, you know, I was like, 
Next time I'm gonna work with it to be smarter. Chemayev didn't destroy Burns in his usual fashion, but he did get the unanimous decision win. Nobody knows how the fight would have ended if he did follow the plan, but we now know that Hamza Chimaev is ready to take on the best from the best. There would be no more tests for him, he's proved his worth. Chatters are already spreading that his next opponent would be number one ranked Colby Covington, who will be the gatekeeper to Hamzat's ambitions for getting the welterweight title. He gonna go to the Cubs, call the Cubs, you know, like this bitch. In the lead-up to the fight against Burns, Garam Katataladze, a fellow MMA fighter that trains with Hamzat, said that fighters are broken and that maybe they don't have anything else to do. This could be true, but seeing Hamzat and looking at his mental process, one could not fail to miss that first and foremost, he was fighting out of love. Before his next fight, Hamzat will return home to his mother maybe help gather a full meal for the family. This time, though, she won't have to wait for her children to eat first. <laughs>